All right, this is our second set of notes from Chapter 8, Graphical Representation of VLE of Mixtures. And the focus in this chapter will be on uh, PXY phase diagrams. So if you think where we left off in the last chapter, we said that if I have a binary system in a single phase, then I have three degrees of freedom. So there's three intensive independent variables that need to be fixed to specify unambiguously the thermodynamic state of my system. All right, and so what that means is, if I have a system, a binary system in a single phase, I need to specify three intensive thermodynamic properties in order to fix that state, right, or fix the state of my system. And so where that's problematic is if I want to plot the phase behavior over my mixture, that's suggesting um, some sort of three-dimensional uh, plot, okay? And so the trick is, is for, you know, actual practical applications, we typically fix the value of one of those, one of our intensive thermodynamic properties, um, so that our problem reduces to just needing two degrees of freedom, which will then allow us to construct a plot in uh, two dimensions. Okay. The first case we're going to look at in this set of notes is a TXY phase diagram in which pressure is fixed, and then we plot temperature versus composition. Okay. So let's take a look at that. All right. So here's an uh, example of a TXY phase diagram from your book for the system heptane and decane. Okay. Uh, and so I have plotted temperature versus composition. Uh, and so for this reason, we call it TXY phase diagram. And in, you know, in, in, so in order to plot in two dimensions like this, uh, pressure is fixed. Okay? And so typically it would be indicated on the graph somewhere, uh, but throughout this entire phase diagram, uh, pressure is fixed at a given value. Okay? So again, I have temperature plotted against composition. And if I look at the two extremes, Okay, so component one is going to correspond to heptane, so therefore decane corresponds to component two. And as we mentioned last time, for binary system, my mole fractions are going to sum to one, so x2 is just one minus x1. So if I look at my you know, limits on my graph, okay, so in the limit that x1 is zero, that corresponds to pure x2. So if I look up this axis over here, okay, where my curve hits my uh, left axis, Okay, that's going to correspond to uh, the boiling point of pure decane, pure component 2. If I were to look at the right-hand side, oh, sorry, wrong way. If I look at the right-hand side, so the limit that x1 is 1, okay, this corresponds to pure heptane. I look where my curve hits my right axis here, that gives me the boiling point of uh, pure heptane. Okay, cool. So when pressure is fixed, okay, if yeah, heptane boils at a lower temperature. So remember, pressure is fixed here. So say pressure is one bar. What this tells us is that decane boils at one bar at this higher temperature relative to heptane. Okay, so it's easier to boil heptane than it is decane. So heptane is easier to boil. We typically refer to it as the most volatile species. When we plot TXY phase diagrams, it's customary to plot your phase behavior with respect to the most volatile component. Okay. So when I look at a TXY phase diagram, right, I'm looking at a phase diagram that typically has this shape. Right? And what I mean by that is if I look at the two endpoints, component 1 is going to have the lower um, boiling point at that pressure. Okay. Why we like to plot with respect to the most volatile species as well, we'll look at some you know, pulling off data for a mixture, or you know, uh, X and Y for a given uh, feed mixture later on. But the general idea is in distillation, I'm trying to separate two components based on their volatility. Uh, in my column, what I expect is to pull off a stream out of my um, condenser at the top of my column, which is rich with respect to my most volatile component, and out the bottom, I expect to concentrate uh, my least volatile component. Okay. All right, so essentially it's two graphs versus one. Uh, so here I have a plot of temperature versus liquid phase composition X1, and then temperature versus Y1. All right, so this curve here corresponds to my phase envelope. How we're going to identify phases is, okay, so know that this curve represents vapor-liquid coexistence, okay? So if I try and think physically through this, just like we did back in Chapter 2, if I have a system that's at vapor-liquid coexistence and I were to decrease the temperature, right, low temperatures are going to favor liquid phases, okay? So if I have my phase envelope here, underneath my phase envelope, Okay, at lower temperatures, I have a liquid. Okay, higher temperatures favor vapors. So on top of my phase envelope, I have a vapor. Below it, I have a liquid. And in between, my system is two-phase. Okay, so if I have a liquid down here, and you know, this 
um, in, this is two phase and that's vapor, okay, and this is my phase envelope. The bottom line here, okay, gets a special name of a bubble line, okay, and where the name bubble line essentially comes from is if I start with a liquid mixture and I heat it up, where I hit my bubble line is going to be the point at which my first bubble forms in that liquid. Ah, again, I, I'm, I flipped the wrong way. Okay, my line on top, okay, this corresponds to my dew line. So if I have a vapor, and this is my two-phase region, all right, where it gets this name is if I start with a mixture of a vapor and I decrease the temperature, where I hit my dew line is where my first drop of liquid is going to form. Okay, so it's like dew on a nice, you know, fall day, I suppose. Okay, so that's my dew line and bubble line. Okay. So below my bubble line, I have a liquid. Above my dew line, I have a vapor. And in between, I have a two-phase mixture. OK, cool. All right, so if I were to take a liquid mixture of this mole fraction Z1, okay, and so notation of the book, X1 will typically correspond to a liquid, typically a saturated liquid. Y will be used for a vapor, typically a saturated vapor. When I'm dealing with you know, processes involving vapor-liquid coexistence, Typically, I use Z to designate either a, sub a liquid um, or a vapor, right? And by liquid, I mean um, a liquid here, uh, you know, not at two-phase coexistence, okay? Um, so here I have a liquid mixture of uh, mole fraction Z1, okay? So Z1 is 0.5. If I were to heat it isobarically, well, pressure is constant throughout my entire phase diagram. So heating isobarically just means increasing the temperature. And if I have a closed system, I know the composition is going to be exactly the same of that total system. Okay, so if I heat it isobarically, that just means moving up vertically in my phase diagram. Okay, so as I heat up that mixture, that's 50% uh, heptane and decane. At 120 degrees C is where I hit my bubble line. Okay, and so the significance of my bubble line is it's where my first vapor bubble forms in my uh, liquid. So if I think about looking at a pot of boiling water on my stove, so if I'm trying to make spaghetti, I have a bowl of, or a pot of water on my stove, I turn on the stove, and if I stare at that system, okay, the bubble point would be where I see that first bubble form in my system, right, in theory. Okay, and so that's what's corresponding to the bubble line. Now what happens is I continue to heat the mixture, okay. Well, at my bubble line, my first bubble forms, Okay. Um, likewise, if I were to go from my vapor phase, if I start with a vapor of a mixture of 0.5, and I were to cool it isobarically, so if I decrease the temperature, okay, where I hit the dew line, which is at 155 degrees C, that's where my first liquid drop you know, forms. Okay. And so then the question is, what happens between 120 degrees and 150 degrees, uh, 55 degrees C, between my bubble point for that mixture and my dew point for that mixture? Okay. So uh, again, by bubble point, it's just... For a given mixture composition, that's the temperature where I hit my bubble line. And when it comes to uh, the vapor phase, my dew point is where, for a given mixture composition, that's where I uh, hit my uh, dew line. Okay. And so what happens is between that, I have a two-phase mixture. Okay. I'm within my phase envelope. Okay. And so I get phase splitting. Okay. And when I get phase splitting, when I'm in my two-phase mixture, I get phase splitting along an isotherm. Why? Because when I have vapor liquid coexistence, those two phases are at the same temperature and pressure. Pressure is already specified and fixed as being constant throughout this entire phase diagram. Okay, so if I have two phases of coexistence, they must be at the same temperature. So if I'm in the two phase region, uh, so what I do is I draw isotherms, where my um, isotherm hits my bubble line. That would correspond to the liquid composition, or my bubble line, or my isotherm hits my dew line. Now that would correspond to my vapor composition. So if I read down those two points, I'd get the composition of the uh, liquid that's in equilibrium with the vapor. Okay, and so from here, you know, why I like to plot with respect to the most volatile component is when I take this mixture and I heat it up into my two-phase region, the composition of my vapor phase is typically greater than the composition of the mixture I started with. All right. Uh, so, you know, again, in distillation, I expect to get a vapor phase, which is rich in the most volatile component. Okay, cool. So it's just you know, more representative of what we're actually trying to accomplish. Okay, and, you know, that's the essence of distillation. I have a mixture of, say, 0.5 mole fractions of uh, uh, heptane. I know that if I heat it up uh, to this, you know, temperature uh, at this given pressure, I enter the two-phase region, the vapor that'll come off of that liquid 
is going to have a composition greater than the feed I started with. So I send that to you know some you know if I condense say that vapor phase, then I end up getting a liquid which is you know more rich in heptane than the mixture I started with. Okay, cool. Okay, so you know I read off compositions by finding where my isotherms hit my bubble line and dew line, uh, and I read those off. Okay, and so for a normal system, what you'll find is that that vapor composition is going to be greater than the liquid when I plot with respect to the most volatile component. Okay. And so, you know, what you'll notice is it's good to have an idea of some extreme conditions. So if I take this mixture and I heat it up to my bubble line, draw my isotherm across, okay, and I get this Y and that X, okay. If I were to continue to heat my mixture, what you'll find is that your Y value is going to decrease uh, as in your, your X value is going to uh, decrease as well. Okay, and so, you know, the significance of this is if I have a mixture that's 0.5 mole frax heptane, and your boss wants to you know, know what's the maximum composition of heptane I can get at my vapor phase, uh, well, you know, the, the quick calculation would be what's the composition of my vapor at the bubble point. Okay, so if I take this mixture and I heat it up to the bubble point, okay, that's going to give me the maximum possible Y that I can achieve in a vapor liquid separation uh, for that um, system. Right? And you know, we're talking about essentially idealized cases here. We'll look at some exceptions to the rule. Uh, later on. So the significance of the bubble point is uh, it can give you um, the maximum obtainable composition in the vapor phase um, under those conditions. Okay, so if we continue to heat it, the vapor phase composition decreases, okay, uh, and it'll continue to decrease until you get all the way up to your dew point. And what happens is your dew point, okay, this is your y, okay, y is essentially equal to z, uh, and then your, you know, x is all the way down here. So at my dew point, y is equal to z, right? The composition of the vapor phase is equal to the mixture you started with. You know, really doesn't do anything for you. And, you know, it should make sense because if I have a closed system and I heat it up, okay, I have two phases in coexistence. If I continue to heat it all the way to the vapor phase, I'm going to get a single phase of the same composition I started with. Okay, um, so bubble line, um, this is where I get my maximum possible y composition of my liquid is just the composition of the mixture I started with. Uh, so bubble line gives you the maximum possible Y that you can achieve uh, in a vapor liquid separation for that system. Okay, um, It gives you a theoretical limit though where Z is equal to X. Uh, what we'll see when we do a mass balance in the next set of notes, you're not actually getting anything. Um, you actually don't have any vapor, it's just a theoretical limit. And if you heat it all the way up to your dew line, uh, that's where you get your lowest possible y, and that's where y is equal to uh, your initial feed composition. So at all temperatures between your bubble line and dew line, your y is going to be greater than your z you started with, which is what you're trying to achieve uh, in a separation.